Oh. All right. Yep. Well, of uh, middleweights, and Kinchin is unbeaten in 24 fights, 23-0-1. Oh, and, and Ralph Moncrief, uh, the veteran who has lost six times but has won 19 with 12 knockouts. So it's Kinchin and Moncrief. Let's take a closer look at James Kinchin. He is 25 years of age from McKinney, Texas, now living in San Diego, a five-time Texas Golden Glove champion, unbeaten in 24 professional bouts. He has scored 19 knockouts along the way, but he has also shown he can go the distance against stern opposition, as he did in this fight against Odell Hadley, winning a 10-round decision. This was Kinchin's first time on national television. It turns out that Kinchin is also a fan of the late show movies and a fan of actor Peter Lorre. Mr. Moncrief, you better be careful because I'll break you up into little pieces. <laughs> but his impression of Peter Lorre won't be enough to impress his experienced opponent today, Ralph Moncrief, who after a two-year layoff from professional boxing has won 14 of his last 18 bouts. Here he is seen scoring a third round knockout victory of Nick Ortiz in Atlantic City in February of this year. At age 32, Moncrief sees this match today as a watershed bout for him. He knows he has to win. I'm fighting a young man and I uh, feel that I'm uh, more experienced and that I should come out on top with the blessing of Almighty God. And um, that um, if I lose, well, I'm looking towards a retirement. I'm thinking seriously that way. So Ralph Moncrief in the ring now has made it a must-win fight for himself at age 32. That's apparent. Uh, that It is apparent that, of course, uh, he needs this victory here on national television to continue in his pro boxing career and perhaps get himself into the top ten among the middleweights. Remember, this is not a terrific division at the moment. It is dominated indeed by the champion Marvin Hagler without too many strong contenders underneath. There is James Kinchin preparing himself as he tries to keep his unbeaten record alive. And so... We will have round one of this 10-round middleweight bout live from McAfee, New Jersey, here on CBS Sports Sunday, after this word from our local stations. For round one, let's go up to our ring announcer here in McAfee, Ed Darien. Ladies and gentlemen, this bout is scheduled for 10 rounds, and it's in the middleweight division. The judges, Tommy Kazmarek and John Stewart. The timekeeper of the bell is Justin Buchanico, counting for the knockdown seconds alternate referee Larry Hazard. In the ring at this time, the man in charge of the scheduled 10 round middleweight bout, referee Vinnie Raynone. <laughs> and now, boxing fans, introducing the principals. First, in the blue corner, wearing the light blue trunks with the white trim, he is weighing in at 159 and one quarter pounds. This gentleman has a record of 19 wins, 6 losses, with 12 big knockouts. All the way from Cleveland, Ohio, ladies and gentlemen, here is Ralph Moncrief. Moncrief. And his opponent in the red corner, wearing the white trunks with the green trim, he is tipping the scales at 164 and 1 quarter pounds. This young man has a record of 23 wins, no losses, one draw, with 19 knockouts. From San Diego, California, boxing fans, here is James the Heat Kinchen. Kinchen. The referee, Vinnie Reynotti, will well, deliver the final instructions. When I say break, backward step, break clean, and resume boxing. If I put you in a neutral corner on a knockdown, stay there even if I count to eight. Don't come out because I'll stop counting. You understand that? You understand that? Protect yourself at all times. Shake hands and good luck. Okay, we have middleweights. James Kinchin, unbeaten in 24 professional bouts. Ralph Moncrief, 19 and 6. And Gil Clancy, a quick comment here about what you expect in this one. Well, this is a great test for James the Heat Kitchen. He's a young guy. He's on his way up, and he's in with a good, solid pro. Despite the fact that Moncrief has a spotty record, he is a good fighter. He's been fighting very well lately. 25-year-old James Kinchin, ranked number 12 by the WBC, unranked Ralph Moncrief is 32, and as you heard him say earlier, he realizes this is a must-win for him. Took two years off from his pro boxing career for religious reasons and decided that uh, 
he could come back and continue to box as a professional and has been successful since uh, making that comeback in 1974. It uh, looks a little uh, darker in here than it was. Uh, don't adjust your sets. Lost a few of our lights. We'll try and get them back for you quickly. It's obviously Halloween. You know, all kinds of funny things are going on here. People coming in here uh, as zombies earlier. And they were all dressed up. Well, Tim, you know, I've heard of fighters putting other fighters' lights out, but I've never heard of them doing it to the ring lights, you know? <laughs> And it hasn't been a solid punch landed yet. Kinchin and White, Moncrief in powder blue trunks. Ralph Moncrief, born in Dayton, Ohio in 1950, now lives in Cleveland. Kinchin, born in McKinney, Texas, now lives in San Diego. That's it. 117 amateur fights for Kinchin. He won 107 of those. He was the 1980 National AAU semifinalist, the National HAL champion and a five-time Texas Golden Glove champion. His best wins over Rudy Robles and Odell Hadley. Ron Creep has victories over Ernie Singletary and Kurt Steen down in South Africa. Kitchen is a well-put-together young man, Tim. Very, very strong and a very, very good puncher. But again, he's in with a veteran and a veteran who's been fighting well lately. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Kinchin started his pro career with 12 knockouts in his first 14 pro fights. And he's been very active in 1982. This is his eighth fight. Young man in a hurry, perhaps seeing that that middleweight division has a lot of holes in it. Opportunity to move up quickly. Under a minute to go in round one, scheduled for 10. Moncrief is not known as a puncher at all, Tim. And I think the main reason for that is the fact that he keeps his legs so far apart. Just, just can't get any pivot on, in his hips when he throws that right hand. Really spreads his legs. Look how far they are apart now. Very serious about his religion, and uh, indeed, when he was in South Africa for one of two fights he had down there, he was invited to uh, preach in black communities, and he did so. Kinchin just missed with the right hand and then landed the left, but again, Moncrief was pulling away and reduced the impact. Final seconds of round number one. James Kinchin and Ralph Moncrief. Number two from the Americana Great George Resort in McAbee, New Jersey. We're in the cabaret room watching James Kinchin in the white trunks with green stripes and Ralph Moncrief in pale blue. Well, Tim, I heard something new in Moncrief's corner. His trainer told him to use one threes. <laughs> I've always heard of one twos, but never one threes. So I, have, I guess they have their own code. He said, you've hurt this guy already. Just keep using those one threes. In the Moncrief corner, trainer Ray Mills and manager Mike LaQuatra. James Kitchen is handled by Wes Wambold, who also trains Irving Mitchell, who was stopped earlier today by the young African from Ghana. Azuma Nelson. Moncrief came in at 159 and a quarter. Kinchin came in at 164 and a quarter, so effectively missing this is over the middleweight bout. Very, very good condition, uh, Tim. If he came in at 164 and a quarter, he had to make the, lift, uh, the middle weight, Tim, and he has to come down to 60. I think he's a little too short for a light heavyweight, and it looks like he may have trouble uh, making the middle weight, Tim. Tim Ryan and Bill Clancy live on CBS Sports Sunday. Still ahead, Leon Spinks and Jesse Burnett. Cruiserweight Championship. Under a minute to go. In this second round. Left to the body by Kinchin. Kinchin is looking to land that one big bomb, Tim. And sometimes that can be a mistake. Those big bombs come all by themselves. All you have to do is work. He's a very strong guy. He should be moving his hands. Oh, 
Concrete does not have a lot of sting on that jab, but it has served to keep Kinchin off him so far in the early going. Approaching the end of the second round, scheduled for 10. The right hand lead landed by Kinchin and White, Ralph Longfreeze and Powder Blue. Round number three, James Kinchin on the left of your screen in the white trunks, and on the right is Ralph Moncrief and the crowd coming alive here in McAfee, New Jersey. Looking for some tough action in this middleweight bout. Take them up, take them up. Kinchin continuing to throw that left hook to the body of Moncrief and has been protected with it. Well, he's, lo he's looking to set up his right hand, Tim. He, he, again, he's looking to land that one big bomb with that right hand. Meanwhile, Moncrief is keeping busy with that jab and scoring points. Well, we thought he scored well enough doing so in round two to take that round, as we see it. It's amazing, all the years that Moncrief has been fighting that nobody has told him to try to close up those legs a little bit. I think it would make him a lot more effective puncher and fighter. Right hand lead by Kinchin landed. Kinchin in the foreground, now the left of your screen in white with green trim and Ralph on three. Set back, break. In powder blue. Another right hand lead by Kinchin. Timmy's starting to get the range. No, no, let him up. Let him up. I said he's just up there. Full day of boxing action on CBS Sports Sunday. NABF Cruiserweights coming up. Leon Spinks at a weight that should be comfortable for him. He was certainly one of the smaller heavyweights. And at 195 pound limit, a lot of people think this is the right division for him against Jesse Burnett, who had been a light heavyweight in the campaigning for the Cruiserweight. That's coming up later. And meanwhile, Moncrief with a combination scoring under a minute to throw in round three. Moncrief landed a beautiful right hand and Kinchin smiled at him. Whoa! Oh, oh, oh. Warning Kinchin for a low blow. Under 30 seconds to go. Second warning in the round to Kinchin. Moncrief staggering Kinchin back and now trying to press the advantage. Kinchin was spinning at the time that Moncrief caught him, so he was off balance. He wasn't really hurt, but he was knocked back. Final seconds of round number three. Middleweight. Now Moncrief and James Kinchin. Good jabs by Moncrief. <laughs> round four. James Kinchin off the stool quickly. Ralph Moncrief, who had a good third round. In the powder blue trunks. Step out, step out. Nice Scheduled 10 round middleweight foul. Well, they told Moncrief in the corner to, to faint the jab and throw a left hook, and they said, You'll knock him out. From the ear of uh, Ralph Moncrief, try and see exactly if that's where that cut is. It must have occurred as they just banged together on the ropes. So right hand by Kinchin landed. I've never seen a boxer get cut there. No, Tim, neither have I. Not exactly the, that kind of a cut. in the heat and for him to win this fight he's going to have to start putting on a lot more pressure use a lot more heat against the preacher and he landed a right hand in the face of Moncrief hooks scored by Kinchin Again, 
in by Kinchin. Step out. Watch your heads. Watch your heads. Watch your heads. Come on. Watch your heads. Come on. Watch your heads. Come on. Tim Ryan and Gil Clancy live from McAfee, New Jersey, covering Ralph Creek and James Kinchin. Later today, Leon speaks to Tim Ryan. Under a minute to go. Kinchin's best punch is that right hand counter over a jam, Tim, but he looks for a little too much. Should be setting it up. <laughs> Seconds left, fourth round. Coming to the end of the fourth round with Moncrief having been totally ineffective since he took that hard shot and knocked him into the rope. Scheduled 10 round middleweight bout. Ralph Moncrief in blue, James Kinchin in white with green trim. Still unable to ascertain exactly where that cut is. It appeared to be on the earlobe of the left ear of Moncrief. Now at the top of your screen, circling right. Does not appear to be a problem for him at this juncture. Maybe, yes, yes, there is some blood from the nose of James Kinchin. Tim, that's from, from those jabs. Moncrief just keeps that left hand busy, and he is scoring points with it. In, in Kinchin's corner, they told him he's falling behind. They said, you're going to have to start going to the body and punching a little more. And look, and they told him that he's looking for that one punch, which he should not be doing. Because he knows something that we don't know. Kinchin, yet to lose as a professional, has just one draw. With 23 victories since only professional after a good amateur career. All right, 25 years of age. Drive that right hand over the jab again, Tim, and again he fell short with it. Right now, Kinchin is fighting Montreal's fight. Staying in the center of the ring in boxing with a tall guy. He should be trying to trap one feet in the corners, trap him into exchanges. Right hand lead just grazed. Gone great. No serious impact. Same punch, Tim. Time after time. Reaching with that right hand. Keep it clean. For his part, Moncrief has not countered it effectively. He's a little late picking it up, and so he's not scoring when he's got an open target off that missed right hand of Kinchin. But this is Moncrief's type of fight, Tim. Just stay out the center of the ring. Not too much action, just score points. Kinchin is the younger man, he's the stronger man, he has a weight advantage. He should certainly try to make a fight out of it. 15 seconds left in round five, 10 round middleweight. Out. James Kinchin in white. Ralph Moncrief in blue. Round number six, you're looking at James Kinchin. We are live from McAfee, New Jersey. Later today, Leon Spinks, Jesse Burnett. Full afternoon of boxing here on CBS Sports Sunday. Along with our other lineup and several guests in the studio with Brent Musburger. You'll be hearing more from later. In Kinchin's corner, Tim, they told him to stop looping that right hand. They said they wanted him to continue to throw a right hand lead, but throw it straight and hook behind it. They also told him that Moncrief is giving him the body and protecting his head. He said all he's, all he's looking at is the head. He should be punching to the body. And again, Moncrief is just going along like Old Man River. Just keeps popping that jab out there and scoring points. Foul 
on Montclair's part, and then you can see the amateur training of Kinchin. He bowed to the referee. Montclair scored with a right hand lead and clinched as Kinchin punched back. Short, but he's, he's finally reaching uh, Munchfield with the jab. May see a little more excitement. Very short. Wild overhand right lead fell short. Munchfield misses one. Break! Get out. We have not seen poetry in motion here thus far with Kinchin and Moncrief. Well, Kinchin is letting Moncrief dictate the pace and fight in the center of the ring, which is Moncrief's type of fight. Under a minute to go. Round six. The punches are not as effective as they looked to him because Mike Beef is moving away with the punch. Kinchin is telegraphing every punch he throws. Step out. Oh, oh. Under 30 seconds to go in the sixth round. He wound up before he threw that left hook. Mike Beef had all day to block it. Coming to the end of round six, middleweights, James Kinchin and Ralph Moncrief. <laughs> round seven, in rounds of middleweight boxing on the right of your screen in powder blue is Ralph Moncrief from Cleveland. Down the right of your screen in white, James Kinchin in San Diego. All right, Tim, I've been saying that Kinchin should get Moncrief against the ropes and in the corners. In Moncrief's corner, they told him to get Kinchin against the ropes and hit him with some combination. They said because he's inexperienced and doesn't know what to do when his back's on the ropes. on the right, Kinchin on the left, and coming up following this bout will be the NABF Cruiserweight Championship, Leon Spinks and Jesse Burnett. Burnett has fought for the light heavyweight title, Spinks has been the heavyweight champion. Now they're trying to win a title in the relatively new 195-pound class. Spinks coming down from the heavyweights, and Burnett moving up the light heavyweights. Trying to load up on every punch, and he's, he's telegraphing his punches. See them coming. Got to put them together. I'm afraid I don't see a threat in this ring uh, to Marvin Hagler's crown. Not at the moment. Tim. Not at the moment. Well, they, they told Munchbeef when you get him against the ropes to throw punches, and that's exactly what he did. These rounds are so close that every little bit of extra activity on one fighter's part is going to win him a round. <laughs> A minute to go. Vinny Rainoni, the referee, will figure in the scoring on the round system here in New Jersey. Along with judges Tom Kazmarek and John Stewart. I'm surprised that Kinchin is staying in the center of the ring. He hasn't changed his style since the opening bell. He's the undefeated guy. He's the kid. He's supposed to be on his way up. But uh, he really hasn't impressed him. It's been a very, very close fight. Under 30 seconds to go. Seven. Let him up. Let him up. Nice and easy. Let's 
go. Approaching the end of the seventh round. Middleweights and McAfee. Round number eight, Ralph Moncrief. In the powder blue, James Kinchin and white with green trim. Moncrief landed the three best punches of the fight to have these first few seconds of this round. Two sharp right hands and a good straight left. from referee Reynaldi to keep the punches up. No points have been taken away, and if you joined us along the way in this bout, there have been no knockdowns. Well, Tim, this is the first time in the fight that Montpiep is actually backing Kinchin up. Backing him up, Tim. Most aggressive round for Montpiep. And there's that short ring apron, Tim. It really caused a fighter to hurt his leg. Let's go. And you saw Kenshin's foot uh, slip off the edge of that apron. As happened to Irving Mitchell in about earlier this afternoon. And he lost to his own Nelson. by Moncrief and just pull back in time. You know, Tim, a lot of people ask me what a regulation boxing ring is. Mean, they probably think it's like a baseball diamond or a football field, but it, but it isn't. It could be any, anywhere from 16 to 20 feet inside. And I'm not sure about the regulations for a ring apron. Up now. You keep up. Low blow warning to Moncrief this time. Well, he's got, he has two more warnings coming to him and then they're even. <laughs> points have been taken away. We haven't got a lot of warnings and no points deducted. Under a minute to go, round eight. Montpiep seems to sense the tension is getting tired, Tim, because he's really taking chances now. He's coming right after him and he's winging punches, winging, winging big punches. And Kenshin does look tired. Kenshin, the younger man, as we mentioned, he's 25, and 32-year-old Ralph Montpiep saying that uh, if he doesn't win this one, he'll probably quit. As we see it, we got him slightly ahead. Under 30 seconds to go, round eight. Again, you figure that Kitchen's the younger man, he has the weight advantage. You think Montpiep would be the guy that would be wearing out. Oh. Heavy punches, but neither... Best right hand was by Montpiep, Tim. To land. Yeah, the heavy artillery, and Montpiep certainly had the best of it. Final seconds of the eighth round. Kinchin on the attack. Step by, watch your head. Get ahead of it. Aldo Snipes is here at ringside, popular in the area. And this is round nine. And Ralph Montreef, as we see it, I gave him round eight. And, and he has now opened up, uh, my card at least, a uh, you know, fairly comfortable lead. I think that uh, Kinchin could still win the fight, but uh, Montreef is in command. Do you agree with, uh, with me, Clancy? Tim, you're never comfortable when you're in there. A lot of these rounds have been very, very close. I have Montreef leading also. Break, break. Again, oh, Kinchin could go back and have two strong Watch rounds and win the fight. Yeah, well, I see it that way, too. And, of course, the judges uh, may have different views. Tom Kazmarek and Bob Stewart and the referee Vinny Reynolds. Best four punches in a fight by Kinchin. So he really landed. fatigue here to be expected. Moncrief missing badly. Kinchin is really breathing heavy now, Tim. He's really tired. after that heavy exchange moments ago can only manage a couple of punches at a time and have to rest. Miguel, as you've often said, those misses tire you out more than the ones that land. Yes, they do, Tim. Fighter throwing punches and misses usually gets very, very tired. Kinchin landed a 
solid left underneath. My feet ties him up. Kitchen has landed more punches in this round, Tim. Solid punches in the the entire fight up until this time. That is a very go. good solid puncher. In the ninth round. And Munchie doesn't seem to have any sting left in his punches at all. But again, when you hit a tired guy, anything can happen. Left hook landed from Kinchin. Break it out. Step back. Out. Out. Well, this has been a good rally by Kinchin. We've had a lot of close fights in the last two or three weeks. Particularly uh, scored in the state of New Jersey, where we've been most often in recent weeks. And uh, this round by Kinchin could mean another close one here today. Fifteen seconds left round nine. Coming to the end of the ninth round, both fighters showing a little weariness. Let's go. Break out, step back. Round number 10, James Kinchin in white, Ralph Monteith in blue, and they come out slugging. A good rally by Kinchin in the ninth round. Monteith's punches seem to have lost all their snaps, and he hit Kinchin right on his shin with the right hand, didn't even blink. Kinchin hit him back three good solid shots. from the nose of Moncrief. He looks dog tired. Well, Kinchin can freewheel now because he feels, I guess he knows that this thing has gone out of Moncrief's punches. He can take all kinds of chances. 32 year old Ralph Moncrief trying to keep his boxing career alive with a victory here that he hopes would propel him into the top 10. 12th rank WBC middleweight James Kinchin trying to remain unbeaten. Hoping to move up into title contention. And it may be on the line in this 10th round. The Cabaret Theater. The Americana Great Gorge Resort. When a fighter throws a right hand away, much much he did and goes right off his feet, you know he's exhausted. His legs won't hold him anymore. Oh, good left hand, and that wobble Moncrief. He's in trouble. Pinching. Sensing it. Trying to get a clean shot. Moncrief punching back. Moncrief threw a beautiful combination, Tim, landed both punches, but again, no sting. Another left hand landed by Kinchin, not as heavy as the one a moment ago. Let him go, step back. Moncrief gamely, staying on his feet. Not at least finish here on his feet, because the judges may see him as the leader from early on. Kinchin, strong in round nine, and stronger here in the tent. Moncrief has absolutely nothing left. But he has that veteran's ring guy. You notice he slid in behind the jab, killed another 15 seconds. He's trying to finish on his feet. Under a minute to go in the fight. Again, in Jersey, they use the round system, Tim, so it doesn't make any difference how big a round you had unless the fight comes out 5-5. So again, it could be an interesting fight to listen to the scoring to. Yes, indeed. We have not had a knockdown on the fight. Most damage has been done in this 10th round by James Kinchin. Only 30 seconds to go. And he was also arm weary and has missed a lot of chances against an obviously weary Moncrief. Left hand landed the net, knocked him down. A wild left hook from Moncrief to the canvas right above us. Gamely onto his feet in the final seconds. And not to be saved by the bell in the final round in New Jersey. Right in the left. Kinchin trying to finish him off. Moncrief grabs and holds on. And there's the bell. Moncrief survives the assault of James Kitchen in the final round. And it will be an interesting fight. The result of this one, Kinchin and Reesot certainly won rounds 9 and 10 handily. But how about earlier on? How did you score it at home? And Ralph Moncrief literally hanging on to survive the fight on his feet. And a game display by the 32-year-old Nathander. Tim, this could be a problem with the round system. Now, again, Kinchin had these two very, very big rounds. Using using the round system, it, could, right. it couldn't do many good at all if the other guy won the close rounds early. Well, on my card, I gave five to Moncrief, four to Kinchin with one even. But again, uh, 
it doesn't mean a thing. It's how the judges here see it. There's that knockdown again. A wild left hook by Kinchin. Not exactly classic, but it enough power for a weary Ralph Moncrief to be sent flying into the ropes. So we'll be back with a decision here on McAfee, New Jersey very shortly, right? Ladies and gentlemen, we have a unanimous decision. And the scoring as follows. Judge John Stewart scoring at 6-3-1. Judge Tommy Kazmarek scoring at 7-2-1. Referee Vinny Rainoni scoring at 5-5, but in points has it 45-43. And the winner, and still undefeated, James the Heat Kinchin. Well, James Kinchin has won the decision here unanimously. A little uh, higher scores than uh, I showed on my card. Stewart and Kazmarek, the judges going 6-3-1, 7-2-1 respectively. The uh, referee, Vinny Rainoni, had it uh, more uh, the way that we saw it. He had it even at 5-5 with the supplemental system, also went with Kinchin. So, James Kinchin remains undefeated. He is now 24-0-1. And uh, with still 19 knockouts, he was just unable to stop Ralph Moncrief, a very game competitor, who hung in there in that final round, but it looked like he was almost out on his feet. And so Kinchin continues.